Hello and welcome back to our series on What Do I Say? I'm Andy Blaylock. Hope you're doing well. I hope this series has been a blessing to you. It's very tricky navigating how we communicate with our fellow man and especially when it comes to brothers and sisters in Christ because more than anyone else, we are told to honor and to encourage and uplift each other in the Lord. And sometimes we are faced with situations, let's be honest, we don't really know how to handle because human relationships are a tricky thing and everyone's lives are fraught with difficulty and trials and sometimes we ask the Lord, what do I say? So I hope it's a help to you. Today we're gonna to talk about something that I'm, I'm gonna call it tricky. This is a tricky subject. Uh, last time we talked about sorrow, that went way over, I'm so sorry. I'll try not to do that again. Um, it was near and dear to my heart though, but th this kind of follows along that lesson. And the question is, what do I say when someone is bitter? When they're bitter? Yeah, I bet you've talked to at least one or two people who've been a gloomy Gus in your life and they're down and out. The tricky thing about bitterness is the scripture is very clear that it is a sin, that it is a destructive root that grows in a person's heart and slowly kills them. It just, it just destroys and crushes any spiritual life that's meant to blossom. Uh, bitterness is slow, it's steady, and it spreads. It's a very dangerous thing. And bitterness can be detected in people's tone and in the words they say, if you're discerning enough, and the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you with that. But sometimes you meet someone and they're just straight up bitter. It's like taking a bite of a lemon. You're like, oh, this guy's bitter. You can feel it, right? And sometimes you're in these situations, you ask, what do I say when someone's bitter? Again, when we, like we talked about sorrow, bitterness can derive out of someone who is genuinely hurting, someone who has faced a crushing disappointment. But sometimes bitterness also arises from a heart that is envious, that is infantile, that is ungrateful or unthankful. So it can either be sinful bitterness or bitterness that came out of a situation that's not their fault. It's tricky. Like I told you, it's, it's very tricky. But if I could give you a guide on what to say with these kinds of people, with, with someone who has a bitter heart, um, I'm gonna read something from, now this is a very dangerous verse if used incorrectly, okay? But in Romans chapter eight, verse 28, you know this verse, it says, and we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Now, here's the problem. When people use that verse, it's one of my favorite verses in all the Bible. It's fantastic, wonderful promise. However, when someone's hurting, sometimes we just throw that out as a dismissive verse. Like, well, sorry for your bad luck, but you know, the Bible says all things work together for good. So just buck up, buttercup. <laughs> that, that's not how you use that verse. The point of that passage, and again, you have to actually read the scriptures and see what God's saying. It says, we know that all things work together for good. Notice the scripture does not say that all things are good. It's not good to lose your job. It's not good to lose a loved one. It's not good to have your hopes and your dreams crushed. It doesn't say that all things are good. It says all things work together for good. No matter what happens in our life, we have no excuse to be bitter because God is leading and working even through the trials and the storms of our life. Um, and this is the guide I want to help you with real quick. It's two things. When you talk to someone who's bitter, it's two simple things. It's a matter of perspective and a matter of purpose. You see, bitterness always comes, it begins with the wrong perspective. I mean, think of Joseph. If there was a man on earth who had a right to be bitter, <laughs> it would have been him. Forsaken from his brothers, excuse me, not just forsaken, betrayed, thrown in a pit, sold into slavery, work at Potiphar's house, gets betrayed by his wife, and it gets falsely accused, thrown in jail for years, then he has a chance to get out of jail, and the one guy who could have helped him completely forgot about him. Just a great life. Anyone, including myself, would be extremely bitter. But what did Joseph say near the penultimate moment of his life? He said, ye thought it to me for evil, but God meant it for good. That's like this verse we just read. The only thing that was, did that change 
Joseph's circumstances? No, he still went through all of those horrible things, but he had the right perspective. He knew that the Lord was with him, and he knew that these things work together for good. It wasn't good to be sold into slavery. It wasn't be good to be thrown into jail, but he knew that God meant it to me for good. And when you deal with someone who's bitter, you have to remind them to have the right perspective. Because that's always what happens. Um, Kevin and I talked recently about how the people of Israel were complaining about they missed the pheasants and the onions and the leeks and the garlics from Egypt. Yeah, but they also don't have the taskmaster's whip. They don't have their children thrown in the Nile. They just had the wrong perspective. They weren't looking at the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night. They didn't see God's protection. They didn't see God's provision. They only cared about the pheasants that they're not eating anymore. And when someone's bitter, you can, you better believe that it's all because they have the wrong perspective. And you have to help them with that. You have to remind them that God loves them, that God died for them, that he says that the very hairs of their head are all numbered, that if a sparrow falls, the Heavenly Father knows about it and you have more value than many sparrows, you have to steer them back to the right perspective. Because half of the battle is just what we see. And bitterness comes out of seeing the wrong thing or just focusing on something so small and minuscule that feels so huge, but you miss all the promises and the blessings of God as a result. So not just perspective, but also number two, purpose. You know, it eliminates a lot of pain and bitterness when you realize that your life, as Jesus Christ said, does not consist of the abundance of the things that we possess. A lot of people are bitter because they look at other people. They look at what they have, they look at what they possess, and they think, why not I? Why didn't I get that? Why don't I have that? How come I have to deal with this trial and they don't? Why do I have this state of health and that person doesn't? Um, bitterness always comes from a wandering eye. But if you're reminded of your purpose, why you're actually here, a lot of that bitterness goes away, all of it, really. If you remind people that the reason why we're here is simply because we are trying to lead other people to Jesus Christ, we don't really have a cause to hold God accountable for our own discontent because that discontent comes about being selfish, about wanting things that God doesn't want for us and therefore it's not his purpose and his plan. You know, when mom passed away, obviously lots of bitter thoughts arose in my heart and it happens to a lot of people. But I am reminded that my mother is in heaven right now. And you know why she's in heaven? She's in heaven because there were men and women who decided that their purpose in life was to follow God and to preach the gospel and to spread the gospel. And they're the reason why my mom is in heaven right now. And I know that really in the end, I may miss her, but I'm going to see her again. And when I see her again, there's never going to be a goodbye or a separation ever again. So in the meantime, though I do miss her, I realize that the reason she's in heaven is because people followed their heavenly purpose. And the only reason I'm here right now talking to you is because God has a purpose for me. So why should I be bitter? Why should I be discontent when the one reason I'm here and you're here is to reach people with the gospel, is to proclaim his truth to others? Always remind people when they're bitter and you're talking with them, Remind them to have the right perspective, but also remind them of their purpose. It's really hard to be bitter when you realize that all things work together for good to them that love God. And what does it say? To them who are called. You are called and I am called according to his purpose. Yes, what Joseph went through was terrible, but God had a reason for it. He had a plan, he had a purpose, and Joseph submitted himself. The only way to defeat bitterness is simply submitting to God. Bitterness comes out of not submitting. I want this and it's not fair. This happened to me and I'm unhappy about it. It's simply submission to God's will. It's having the right perspective and following God's purpose for their lives. So always steer people in that direction. I hope this is a blessing to you. It's a tricky thing, but God gives you the wisdom. And remember this too, by the way, not just the wisdom of words to say, but also use his word. It says his word won't return void. When someone's bitter, always point them to the scripture. Always. You can never go wrong. So again, hope this is a blessing. I'm excited for the next one. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. God bless and bye-bye.